show for today. The topic is fear, and we're fortunate to have with us to deal with the topic of fear, uh, Dr. Cupid Poe. And of course, uh, Dr. Poe, before we had our first commercial break, we promised that we would give you an opportunity to continue our discussion on fear. And I do recall that uh, one aspect of fear uh, you mentioned, you, you've, you've indicated that fear is not always a bad thing, but uh, some folks can have what you call excessive fear. And let's give you an opportunity during the second segment to uh, talk about excessive fear, how you define excessive fear and some of the elements of, of excessive fear. Right. Excessive fear, for the most part, is a byproduct of me not treating other people like I want them to treat me. Or it's a byproduct of me being abusive towards myself. Now, either one of those and both of those is a violation of the golden rule, which says do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. So, whenever I oppose the will of God for my life, which is that I love him and love my neighbors myself, mm -hmm. or said another way, uh, whenever I pose treating others like I want them to treat me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one of the consequences is excessive fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that excessive fear is essentially fear of punishment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you see, we don't belong to ourselves. Mm -hmm. We didn't create ourselves. We belong to the one that created us. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the owner, our owner, has the right to have certain requirements mm -hmm. and certain expectations of us. Mm -hmm. And the thing that he expects the most is that we would acknowledge his existence and that we would treat others like we want them to treat us. So excessive fear then, or fear of punishment by him, is one of the consequences mm -hmm. of not following his uh, instruction. Mm -hmm. And so you can see that, that excessive fear then is fairly widespread. Mm -hmm. And so the, the events of September 11th intensified excessive fear mm -hmm. in the lives of those people who were not living mm -hmm. a life that was pleasing mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, didn't, it didn't traumatize so much people who were, mm -hmm. okay? Because you might say that their conscience was relatively clear. Mm -hmm. But when I am not doing what God wants me to do, then one of the problems I'm going to have is excessive fear. Mm -hmm. Now, excessive fear has many faces. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. One face is uh, anxiety. Uh, people who are excessively afraid often feel very anxious and they look very nervous. Another uh, face of excessive fear is depression, mm -hmm. which is very widespread. Mm -hmm. Another uh, face of excessive fear is paranoia, mm -hmm. extreme suspiciousness. Mm -hmm. Another uh, uh, manifestation of excessive fear, insomnia, mm -hmm. major problem in our country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one other uh, manifestation, persistent headaches. Mm -hmm. So there are many faces uh, of, of excessive fear mm -hmm. and many faces of extreme fear. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you convince individuals who themselves are self-centered, uh, for the most part, uh, Dr. Poe, uh, and at the same time convince them that uh, they are prone to uh, excessive fear because of their self-centeredness? Because it seems to me that if they are so self-centered, uh, the last thing in the world that they would think about uh, as a solution would be to turn to God. Uh, but well, how do you can reach individuals like that? Uh, well, I think we have to, as a Christian, I try to live a, uh, a sincere, honest Christian life uh, so that persons can, can see what God has done and is doing in my life. <laughs> so I hope that my life is a positive witness for, for the goodness of God and for what God can and will do. The other thing I do is I simply share the word with people with whom I come in contact. Mm -hmm. I say that the word says, if you live a self-centered life mm -hmm. or a disobedient life, then there are a lot of negative consequences. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you live a God-centered life mm -hmm. or a spirit-centered life, then the rewards are tremendous, awesome. Mm -hmm. Fellowship with God, mm -hmm. inner peace, mm -hmm. inner joy, fulfillment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a creative life mm -hmm. or a victorious life. Mm -hmm. So I lay the facts in front of them as I understand them mm -hmm. and, and as I understand them based on personal experience and based on what the word says. And, 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 and so it's either, it's up to them. They, in the end, they have to make the choice as to whether or not they're going to accept it or not. And of course, if they don't accept it and remain self-centered, they have to accept the consequences of being a uh, self You know, you talked about uh, some of the manifestations, some of the faces, faces of uh, fear. 
and I think you mentioned depression and uh, insomnia and, and some of the other things. Why don't you uh, talk about those? Because uh, I think that a large number of folks uh, are depressed, and, and all you have to do is look around at them, and you can see the way they move and the whole thing. Uh, talk about depression. I mean, what, what, what's the problem here? Okay, well, first of all, you know, there is uh, a number of theories uh, in an attempt to explain depression, one of which is that depression is related to chemical imbalances in the brain mm -hmm. of certain neurotransmitters, particularly serotonin and norepinephrine. And, of course, there are other theories that suggest that genetics, uh, mm -hmm. we inherit certain uh, depression-prone uh, tendencies. Um, and, of course, there are environmental hypotheses mm -hmm. that oftentimes people grow up in environments that contribute mm -hmm. to depression. I think there's some truth to all of those theories. But now in my own thinking, I think that um, uh, depression very often is related to abusive behavior, not just on the part of the affected person, but on the part of other people mm -hmm. who've had some negative impact on the affected but, person. Mm -hmm. It may have been, the person may have been abused in their childhood mm -hmm. and or adolescence and or adult life. Mm -hmm. So if I'm abused, I'm more likely to have a problem with depression. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if I'm abusive, mm -hmm. if I abuse others and or myself, I'm more likely to have a problem with depression. Now I happen to believe that people who are the victims of abuse mm -hmm. are more likely to manifest depression than people who are the perpetrators. Mm -hmm. Example of that is mm -hmm. uh, the prevalence of depression is about uh, twice uh, that in females mm -hmm. uh, compared to males, mm -hmm. all right? And I think that part of the reason for that is, I think the major reason is that females are more often the victims of abuse mm -hmm. rather than the perpetrators, mm -hmm. whereas males are more often the perpetrators. And so I think the perpetrators of abuse are less often depressed but are more often paranoid, mm -hmm. which is worse, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Which is worse. Mm -hmm. So, um, in terms of uh, self-centered behavior, yes, self-centered behavior does contribute to depression. Mm -hmm. uh, it contributes to depression in those who are the perpetrators, but it also, and it also contributes to a higher incidence and prevalence of depression of those who are the victims of, mm -hmm. of self-centered behavior. Mm -hmm. and, and so out of fear comes uh, this, uh, uh, excessive fear comes depression and comes all of these other uh, negative kinds of things that has an impact upon the individual's life. And so if we could inform folks of uh, the problems, of course, that, I guess that's what, uh, that's what you, you do as a psychiatrist, inform folks of uh, some of these problems. And of course, Dr. Poe, we're ready for our uh, second commercial break, and after which we'll come back and give you an opportunity to talk about some other aspects of this. And we'll be back with our audience following this show.